Good morning. I'm Robert Bergino, Chancellor of the University of California, Berkeley. It's my very great pleasure to welcome you and our guests who are participating at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Today is a historic day for the Berkeley campus, one which we share with BP, one of the world's largest energy companies, and with our colleagues at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and with the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We are honored to have California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger and Illinois Governor Rod R. Blagojevich present. I extend to them our campus warmest welcome. Uh, I'm also very pleased to welcome back to our campus California Senate President Pro Tem Don Parada and Senate Minority Leader Dick Ackerman. At the University of, Il of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, I'd especially like to recognize First Lady Blagojevich of Illinois and my good friend Chancellor Richard Herman. Uh, thank you for joining us. It now gives me It now gives me great pleasure to invite Robert A. Malone, Chairman and President of BP America Incorporated, to the podium to make the exciting announcement which all of you have come to hear. Well, thank you, Chancellor, and good morning. Governor Schwarzenegger, Governor Govoinovich, <laughs> my apologies. Um, chancellors, university presidents, guests, and members of the media. Today it gives me a great pleasure to announce a groundbreaking partnership that we believe will have an immense positive impact on our world. BP is on a journey to not only provide the energy needed today, but also to find, develop, produce, and manufacture clean, sustainable energy for the future. Six months ago, we announced that BP would establish an institute to perform groundbreaking research aimed at probing the emerging secrets of bioscience and applying them to the development and production of new and cleaner energy. I'm pleased to announce our search is over. BP has entered a strategic partnership with the University of California at Berkeley and its partners, the University of Illinois at Urbana and Champaign and the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory to establish the Energy Bioscience Institute. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome these fine institutions as our partners. BP will invest $500 million over the next 10 years in the Institute and its programs. The Energy Bioscience Institutes will perform groundbreaking research aimed at the production of new and cleaner energy, initially focusing on renewable biofuels for road transport. However, the Institute will also pursue research in three other key areas. The conversion of hydrocarbon to clean fuels, improved recovery from existing oil and gas reservoirs, and carbon sequestration. Up to 50 BP staff will be located at UC Berkeley and at the University of Illinois campuses. They'll work in partnership with the faculty and the researchers. And BP and its partners will share governance of the Institute and guidance for its research programs. We chose UC Berkeley and the University of Illinois after a global search. Both have demonstrated a track record of delivering big science, large complex developments that are predicated on both scientific breakthroughs 
and engineering applications. We believe BP is joining with some of the best science and engineering talent in the world. Together, we will seek to meet the worldwide demand for low carbon energy. As part of this effort, we'll be working to improve and expand the production of clean, renewable energy through integrated developments of better crops, better processing technology, and new biofuels. We, we will be exploring local crops as potential energy solutions and looking at non-food crops that have the ability to make energy sustainable over the long term. The Energy Bioscience Institute will be the world's first and only public or private institution with a focus on basic and applied biological research that is relevant to energy. We believe it will become the hallmark for excellence in energy bioscience, and it will indeed create energy, an energy bioscience discipline. This is indeed an exciting day for those of us who hold great hope for a world that runs on a cleaner energy. On behalf of the BP Group, I want to congratulate the University of California at Berkeley, the University of Illinois, and the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory as well as the states of California and Illinois. I received a note from Secretary of Energy Sam Bodman, and he sent his best wishes today. He was sorry that he couldn't be here, but asked, uh, asked that I tell you how proud he is that the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory, one of the Department of Energy's preeminent national science labs, and their academic partners from the University of California, Berkeley, and the University of Illinois were selected as hosts for BP's new Energy Bioscience Institute. He also asked that I tell you how encouraged he is to see private industry joining actively to support research in clean energy, at clean energy sources like bioenergy and biofuels. I want to thank Secretary of Energy for the support that he has given us. I also want to thank Governor Schwarzenegger, Governor Blagojevich, for joining us here today, for their support of our clean energy journey. We look forward to a very long and successful partnership. And now it's my pleasure <clears throat> to introduce the Uni University of California President Robert Dines. <laughs> Thank you. This is a really good day for, for, Calif for California. It's a good day for UC, but it's really a good day for California. It's a tremendous day for Mother Earth to drive this worldwide movement to develop new and sustainable energy sources for the health of our planet. I want to thank BP for its leadership in putting their trust in the University of California. And, uh, and University of Illinois. We at UC have a proud tradition of research, development, and delivery, and delivery our D&D. &D. And I think that's part of why we were selected to do this. I'd like to thank Chancellor Bergino, Director Chu, and all the folks who worked really hard to put together this proposal to demonstrate, not fiction, but fact, what we do here in California. Also to Senator Parada, Senator Ackerman, and, and um, the, the uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Mr. Nunez, who can't be here today, they've played an important role in helping put California in the forefront so that we can actually lead the world. We're pleased to have the opportunity, of, of course, to partner with our friends and colleagues at the University of Illinois. This is a great partnership, and, uh, and, and I can't imagine how wonderful it's going to be over the next decade. But it is especially my honor to introduce someone who not only is a good friend of the University of California, but has played a major role in positioning California as an environmental leader. He played a critical role in this effort by proposing state funds to complement the resources BP is bringing to the initiative, and we're delighted to have his strong support for research and innovation that benefits all the people of California and the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob Dines, for the wonderful introduction. I really appreciate that, and your great enthusiasm always. I like that. This is actually a day to celebrate, and I'm very happy to be part of this great celebration here. It's also great to have so many dignitaries here and to have a bipartisan support, which is very important. Think about that. It's an environmental issues, and we have Republicans and Democrats sitting here. Isn't it great? I mean, I'm very ecstatic about that. Things are happening in this state. Also, I have very good news about education in California. I don't know if you read, because now more than 10 percent of all the second graders know how to spell Gorgovich and Schwarzenegger. So, it's, uh, uh, so there's, uh, we, are, we are making great progress in California. I mean, the, the, the numbers were much lower just three years ago. And so, so it's just uh, to let everyone know. But anyway, it is great to be here today. And I can tell you how excited I am that BP has chosen UC Berkeley and California for this new $500 million Energy Biosciences Institute. This is great news for California, and this is great news for America, because it is the world's first research lab dedicated to long-term productions of alternative fuels, and it's right here in California. Like Bob said, BP looked at universities and research institutions all over the world, and they chose our state. And so I'm very proud and honored that BP recognized California's leadership and commitment to clean energy. Now, thanks to uh, UC Berkeley and BP, we will be the world center for biofuel research. And the work that is done here will put these fuels into the mainstream as soon as possible. Because California is not waiting. We are not waiting for clean energy revolution. No, uh, we are actually the leaders. We are the leaders in that revolution. To help this project get started, as Bob has said, I have proposed $40 million in lease revenue bond bonds in our budget so that we can build a new state-of-the-art facility on the Berkeley campus, which will launch its research by the end of this year. So as you can see, this is not something that will be started in two years from now, three years from now. This year, this will be started. So this is perfect, the perfect complement to AB32, which is, of course, the global warming bill, and the executive order that I have just signed two weeks ago on new low-carbon fuel standards, which will cut carbon emissions by 10 percent by the year 2020. By unleashing the market forces of that plan, we would triple the size of California's renewable fuel markets and put more than 7 million alternative fuel and also uh, uh, hybrid vehicles on California roads by the year 2020. Meeting our energy needs with clean and alternative fuels is more than just a California issue. It's an issue that is uh, a concern all over the world. And so this is something that many countries and markets around the world are now focusing on. This is why it is great that UC Berkeley will be working with scientists and researchers at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and the University of Illinois. I like this great partnership. I'm looking forward to doing this together. And, uh, you know, we are very lucky to have here, of course, the great governor of the state of Illinois, who is going to talk a little bit more about this partnership, what it means to our states and what it means for the nation. So please welcome Governor Rod Blagojevich uh, to come up and talk a little bit to us. Please, big hand. Thanks for saying that, Ryan. Thank you very much, Governor. Thank you for your kind introduction. Thank you for speaking as you did about bipartisanship. You know, I, uh, I would travel to Afghanistan if someone said there's $100 million for the University of Illinois. <laughs> but if somebody told me all we can get is $10, I'd still come here because I want to meet you. <laughs> I, uh, I have been a big fan of Governor Schwarzenegger's long before he was governor. And it's altogether fitting and proper that California a state that by itself would be the sixth or seventh largest economy in the world, a state that is really a very impressive and diverse and powerful state in so many ways, a larger than life state would have a larger than life governor. And in the spirit of bipartisanship, I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but Governor Schwarzenegger is my second favorite governor in America. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me take a moment to acknowledge my former colleague in the Congress. I had a chance to serve in the United States Congress for six years. I sat on the Armed Services Committee, and I actually met, made some of those committee meetings, didn't I, Ron Dellums? 
And Congressman Ron Dellums was there as the Democratic minority leader, a great person, very intelligent, very knowledgeable, and visionary. And it's just a real pleasure to see you again, Ron. And thank you for serving our country the way you did. <laughs> to Chancellor Herman at the University of Illinois, to President Joe White at the University of Illinois, to Bob uh, Epley, who's uh, there as uh, the head of the Il University of Illinois Board of Trustees, to my wife, Patty in Champaign and our little daughter Annie who's with her. I love you wherever you are um, and I'll be home for dinner if all goes well. But we are delighted to be here to partner with the University of California. The University of Illinois, our university which is the, economic, or the uh, jewel of our university system, partnering with a great and historic university like the University of California to do something that really is what America is all about. And you stop and think about Governor Schwarzenegger's career, coming from another country and building the great success that he's enjoyed here. A guy with a long and hard to pronounce last name that people couldn't say back in the 1970s. I think about my own experience, the son of an immigrant father who uh, had a name that has been difficult to say even as recent as the last five or 10 minutes. <laughs> and for us to become governors in big states, Governor Schwarzenegger here in California, me in Illinois, the land of Lincoln. This is a great country. It's part of the American dream, the land of opportunity for everyone. It's also a land of innovation. And when America and Americans face tough times and face challenges, we have, our history tells us, responded. And we've been creative. And we've taken advantage not just of the brain power that we have, but we've taken advantage of making sure that we become a land of innovation too. We were the place at the beginning of the 20th century that began at Kitty Hawk with the Wright brothers in aviation as a result of their great pioneering. Here in America, we were able to respond to the Sputnik, and President Kennedy laid out a challenge in the early 1960s that we would, in fact, land a man on the moon before the decade was out, and we did it. When we focused and put our energies and resources and commitment behind something, we, through innovation and technology and science, lead the world and get it done. And I think today our challenge is very much what it has been in the past. Not just weaning ourselves off, off of our dependence on foreign oil. Not just making sure that we can create jobs by investing in things like biofuels, but also by recognizing that this is good for the environment. This is healthy and clean ways of being able to fuel our economy. And being able to be partners with the University of California to lead on something like this to be able to be part of an effort where British Petroleum has generously provided us $500 million, and $100 million of it going to the University of Illinois. This is a historic day for California, for Illinois, and for the rest of our country. We can do in biofuels with the Energy Bioscience Institute what NASA did for space. We can lead our country into this new century, being right and smart about the environment but also recognizing that we can harness our natural resources to turn it to the advantage of our country, our citizens, and all of humankind. And so this is an exciting prospect, and it's all together fitting and proper, as I said moments ago, that we would do it in a state like California with a governor like your governor, a larger-than-life figure that we can lead here. And our history teaches us that California leads, and as California goes, America goes. And our teacher, history also teaches us that Illinois, the land of Lincoln, leads. And as Illinois goes, so goes America. So I am honored and humbled to be part of this effort. I want to thank again British Petroleum for its foresight, its vision, and its very generous grant to the University of California and to the University of Illinois. And we look forward to working with you to make this a reality and make this a success. Thank you very much. Thank you both governors for your gracious comments. Uh, this is indeed a historic day. Uh, like others before me, I want to thank BP for having chosen to partner with the University of California at Berkeley, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, and the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign to create the Energy Biosciences Institute. We congratulate BP for their far-sighted vision to bring together the most talented people in the world to address 
one of the most difficult problems of our time, solving the global energy crisis through technologies that avoid damage to our environment from carbon emissions. As you just heard uh, from uh, Governor Blagojevich, this is our generation's moonshot. BP's spectacular commitment to the EBI and the determination and speed with which BP proceeded from their call for proposals to the decision support their ambitious vision and hopes for the development of new energy sources that will be sustainable, commercially viable, and environmentally friendly. These are goals that resonate strongly with scientific and energy policy research being pursued at our three institutions. I want to thank our governor and the California legislature for their outstanding leadership and support. California is already the national leader in energy policy and conservation. California now leads in research on clean, sustainable alternative energies with the foundation formation of the EBI. We are especially pleased that BP has chosen to partner with two preeminent and leading public, and I underline public, universities, together with the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Addressing the major problems that face our society is our public mission. This energy research effort will continue our legacy of excellence in research, teaching, and innovation in service to our state, our nation, and our world. I believe deeply that if the solution to sustainable, reliable, and environmentally responsible energy is to be found, it has the best chance of happening with this academic National Laboratory Industry Consortium. Let me now invite to the podium University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign Vice Chancellor for Research, Charles, or affectionately known as Chip Zukowski. Good morning. I'm very glad to be here. Today we initiate a partnership that has the potential to change the lives of our children and our grandchildren. This partnership is made possible by a world encircling corporation that includes two great research universities and a national lab. We are here to launch a new age for agriculture and to commit to understanding how massive changes in the crops we grow may alter our environment. Today, BP announces with Illinois, Berkeley, and Lawrence Berkeley National Labs a historic endeavor to alter the energy economy of the planet. Developing solutions to energy security and environmental sustainability are critical to the health of our economy and to the stability of our culture. Recognizing these critical issues, Governor Bogoyevich um, has launched an energy initiative aimed at managing the state's nuclear, solar, coal, wind, and natural gas resources. California is recognized as a leader in environmental and energy policy. The Energy Biosciences Institute thus brings together two state governments and their flagship research institutions and a joint commitment to attack one of the central problems of our time. Governments and academic institutions alone are unable to solve the energy issues we face. We must have a partnership with the private sector. Today, we recognize the vision of the leadership at BP and the long-term thinking of the BP stockholders to invest in the Energy Biosciences Institute. Strength and Feedstock Development at Illinois was created by the State of Illinois' Council for Food and Agricultural Research that supported the pioneering work of Professor Steve Long in the use of miscanthus, which is a grass that grows to 14 feet um, high each season, and to use miscanthus as a bioenergy crop. In establishing the Illinois Institute of Genomic Biology, Professor Harris Lewin created a multidisciplinary research program to address issues related to biofuel production and the effects of climate change on plant growth. The Illinois branch of EBI will be housed in the Institute of Genomic Biology and with the help of Professor Steve Long will build on this foundation to develop herbaceous perennials as long-term fuel sources. The missions of the universities, national labs, and those of BP are different. Together, however, we agree that secure and environmentally sustainable energy resources must be found. 
The partnership embedded in the EBI is an experiment where institutions dedicated to educating the leaders of tomorrow and to advancing knowledge and scholarship are partnering with a for-profit multinational corporation for public good. We are excited about pursuing this experiment and we're committed to ensuring that it is a success. Our Chancellor, Richard Herman, is fond of observing that Illinois is an institution without boundaries. Our prairie sky stretches forever, and we have no intellectual boundaries because of the spirit, the expectations, and the vision of our faculty, staff, and students. The partnership made possible by BP in creating the EBI builds on our heritage as a leader in education and research that changes the world and improves the human condition. We are indeed proud to have been chosen by BP as a partner for building EBI. With that, I'd like to invite Professor Dr. Steve Chu, the director of Lawrence Berkeley Labs, to make his remarks. Uh, before I begin my formal remarks, I just wanted to let the audience know that um, the odds are three to one. I've been told that I can only speak for two minutes, and the odds are three to one I can't do this. <laughs> and, the, and the smart money is on that I can't do it. But um, BP has shown 100 to one. <laughs> has shown uh, the odds of, I, I Googled it just five minutes ago. <laughs> The BP has shown great leadership in its investment in the development of sustainable clean energy. An essential part of the energy a solution to the energy problem will be the development of cellulosic biofuels and biotechnologies that will enhance carbon sequestration and fossil fuel recovery. The BP Institute will train a new generation of bioenergy scientists in a culture that will combine the best qualities of individual genius with nimble teams. In this setting, we will rapidly explore bold approaches that go well beyond the reach of a single investigator or a single discipline. This culture of team science was first introduced by Ernest O. Lawrence, UC Berkeley's first Nobel laureate. 75 years ago, he founded what is now one of the Department of Energy's premier national laboratories. This national treasure in intimate partnership with UC Berkeley has been mounting a full-scale assault on the energy problem for more than two years, and we're delighted to be joined by UC Illinois and, of course, BP. During this time, I've been thrilled to see a growing and contagious intellectual excitement over our energy program, dubbed Helios. The BP announcement is also a testament to the extraordinary effectiveness of America's investment in its research universities and national laboratories. I would like to thank all our supporters but especially the DOE, our individual donors, <clears throat> and our early supporters. California has been the U.S. leader in energy policy, energy efficiency, and energy conservation. Governor Schwarzenegger, Lieutenant Governor Garamendi, Speaker Nunez, Senator President Pro Tem Parada have now shown the leadership that will make California the leader in clean energy research. I want to, of course, thank BP and also to congratulate them on their extraordinary wisdom in their choice of partners. <laughs> Thank you, BP. Uh, now I'd like to introduce the other Steve, Steve Coonan, chief scientist. Now, be before I do this, I also want to let you know that he's actually my twin brother. We're still debating who's going to play Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Steve? <laughs> You know, when we in BP conceived the Energy Biosciences Institute, it felt right to me. Right subject at the right time. Having now talked about it with many people during the past year, I've come to believe that it's extraordinarily right, and let me tell you why. The reliable and responsible provision of energy is one of today's grand challenges. Technical innovation, enabled by sound policy, will be essential to meeting that challenge. We've come to understand that bioscience-based technologies are among the most promising new routes to energy. 
You know, physicists like to cast their thinking in simple but powerful ideas. And there are at least three other physicists on the podium here that know what I'm talking about. I don't know if there are any physicists on this side. No? Okay. <laughs> so, for us as physicists, there are three simple but powerful ideas that explain why an energy company is interested in biology. First, both energy and life are based upon the element carbon. About 80% of the world's energy today comes from fossil fuels, carbon that was once in living organisms. And after three and a half billion years of evolution, it's likely that life has some interesting things to teach us about how one manages carbon. Second, biology is the most rapidly advancing of the sciences. Our knowledge about how life works and our ability to exploit that knowledge are expanding at an incredible rate and will likely continue to do so for the next several decades. Finally, biology and biotechnology have been driven largely by biomedicine, particularly pharmaceuticals, with far smaller efforts applied to agriculture and chemicals. We have not yet seen many applications in the energy sector, and this Energy Biosciences Institute is meant to change that. While some national and state governments have begun supporting energy biosciences, the investment that BP is, is announcing today is by far the most material and focused to date. This institute will be the world's first with the sole mandate to develop and apply biosciences to the production of new and cleaner forms of energy. Biofuels are the most obvious and immediate focus, but improving oil recovery, processing fossil fuels, and carbon mitigation are also on the agenda. With this program, BP is enabling academic and private sector scientists to collaborate in novel ways to address one of the world's most important challenges. These projects will be quite complex and highly multidisciplinary, requiring the coordinated efforts of diverse scientists and engineers. For example, to do biofuels right requires that we integrate plant science, agronomy, microbiology, chemical engineering, engine technology, and social science. We have to develop the optimal feedstocks, understand how they are best grown and processed, find the best biofuels to manufacture, and anticipate and manage the social impacts of large-scale biofuels production. So it's no accident that we in BP have chosen this campus, which, as Steve remarked, gave birth to such big science some 70 years ago to host the EBI. Beyond the research itself, we expect that the EBI will be instrumental in educating subsequent generations of researchers who are skilled in these subjects and methods of research. Now, there are other elements that have to come together with the Berkeley campus to make the EBI a success. Along with its own substantial capabilities in science and engineering, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign brings expertise in agronomy and large-scale field testing, as well as a tradition of interacting with farmers. The Lawrence Berkeley National Lab built over many decades of federal investment and University of California stewardship, brings with it an unrivaled collection of facilities and researchers in biology, chemistry, and physics. And biotechnology companies, many located here in the Bay Area, bring other unique capabilities to the task. So the situation is, in fact, extraordinarily right. BP and our partners share a common vision for applying forefront technology to make a material impact on important problems. We have the resources available and a community of talented researchers who are energized to the task. So really, it's time for us to get to work. Thank you. Bob? Steve, not only as a physicist, but I knew him well in his past life. 
truly outstanding uh, physicist and academic uh, leader, and now obviously a visionary of a different sort. Thank you. Uh, this now concludes the national por portion of our press announcement. Uh, as Illinois now begins the local portion of its event, uh, I'd like to welcome our elected California officials. Uh, first of all, I would like to recognize the leadership of the California legislature, California Senate President Pro Tem Don Parada, and Senate Minority Leader Dick Ackerman, uh, together with Lieutenant Governor John Garamendi in the front row, who's also here with us today. Uh, all of these have been invaluable. We thank you for your support and vision as we move forward in this vital undertaking. I also want to acknowledge uh, an important state leader who could not be with us here today because of a prior commitment, uh, Assembly Speaker Fabia Nunez. Speaker Nunez has been a great friend and supporter of the university and was one of the first people in Sacramento to support our work in biofuels, and we want to thank him for his leadership. Now, here is Senator Parada. Thank you for that generous introduction, uh, Chancellor. Uh, it's amazing, Steve, how you could just find us physicists in the audience. <laughs> I took high school physics, and I remember one word, vector. Now that I'm standing here, I will assure you that the room will be cooler in a few minutes because everybody in the camera bay will be leaving. And uh, uh, I was wondering why I was invited here today, and then I realized that the governor had the foresight to put into his budget $40 million to build a facility to house uh, this project. And so uh, we both, Dick and I, have to vote on that. Uh, and so here we are. <laughs> and I will publicly make my commitment to do so. <clears throat> I also want to acknowledge the fact that uh, Governor Schwarzenegger has really taken California into a new dimension with his willingness to take on uh, an issue that frankly we've talked about a lot, but we really had not done anything about politically. And by making it a major issue in his administration, and by working closely with the legislature, it is right and proper that the investment made here today by British Petroleum is happening in California. And I want to underscore one thing that was said by uh, the chancellor, and that is it is no mistake that these two universities are public universities. Some of the finest scholarship and research in the world today is being done by our public universities. I am proud to represent this campus. Dick Ackerman went to school here, and John Garamendi graduated from here. Uh, <laughs> well, we, this postpartum, or post, yeah, post <laughs> This post uh, nonpartisan time is we have to have a little sense of difference. So, uh, in all events, uh, I am delighted for the University of California. I am delighted for the leadership of this university, for the regents that invest their time uh, to make this a great university. And we are all looking forward to doing more in this area for the future generations. And I want to especially thank Mr. Malone, who they say, he says, some people pronounce it Maloney. But uh, we're well-bred Californians, and uh, I thank BP for its foresightedness and its uh, willingness to work together with us for the future. Thank you. Now, I'm going to introduce my colleague, Dick Ackerman. Uh, Dick is a, uh, a graduate of this university. If you go into his office, it is a shrine uh, to the University of California at Berkeley. Uh, the only thing that comes close to that is the Bear Bryant Museum in Tuscaloosa. Uh, but uh, he bleeds blue. He wears that tie, not simply here, but uh, many other places. He's a proud product of our university, and he's a delightful colleague and a good friend, Dick Ackerman. Uh, 
speaking as a lowly Berkeley math major, uh, I want to uh, welcome everybody here and congratulate everyone. Uh, Senator Prada and myself and Assemblyman Blakesley and Hancock down there last year worked on a number of things in the bonds called private-public partnerships. And as I was flying up here this morning, I said, how can we find a better example of a private-public partnership where you put public assets, public knowledge with private assets and private knowledge and come out with a project? I want to congratulate Governor Schwarzenegger, and I'm going to try and congratulate Governor Blagojevich. How's that? My wife is an itch, too, but not, the, not as long. Uh, <laughs> and the, the University of California, Univers University of Illinois uh, faculty and officials for someone to invest a half a billion dollars, that's with a B, a half a billion dollars in anything, uh, says quite a lot and it says they have confidence in the system, they have confidence in the universities and confidence in the, in the state government. So I congratulate all of you and with that, go Bears. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Ackerman. Uh, I'd like to recognize several state and local officials who have uh, also been very supportive and who are here today. Uh, first of all, Assemblywoman Lonnie Hancock, our local representative. <laughs> Assemblyman Sam Blakesley. Uh, of course, our own Mayor of Berkeley, Tom Bates. and our newly installed Mayor of Oakland, Ron Dellums. Uh, thank you all for coming. This concludes today's announcements. I'd again like to thank both governors for making this such a memorable morning, and uh, thank you for your support. Governor? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you.